السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته طلاب المرحلة الخامسة We will continue our lectures in rheumatology and this day we will discuss spondyloarthropathy or sometimes we call it seronegative spondyloarthritis What is spondyloarthropathy? Spondyloarthropathy comprise a group of related inflammatory musculoskeletal disorder so it is not single disorder it's a group of disease that share common symptom and the clinical feature and all have shared immunogenetic association with human leukocyte antigen B27 we mention sometimes we call it seronegative spondyloarthropathy so, rheumatoid arthritis is seropositive, while this is seronegative. So it is, have some feature common with rheumatoid arthritis, but serology is not the same. In contrast to rheumatoid arthritis, spondyloarthropathy, there are frequent and notable synovial musculoskeletal lesion. Previously in rheumatoid arthritis, we say the main sites in musculoskeletal system is synovial joint but in here the lesion is multiple including non-synovial musculoskeletal sites such as ligament, tendon, periosteum and other bone lesion this is number one this site could include enthesitis which defined by inflammation at the site of ligament or tendon insertion into bone or dactylitis, which is inflammation of whole finger or toes, may also occur. This is dactylitis. You see, this patient has spondyloarthropathy and have dactylitis, which is inflammation of whole fingers or toes. Now, we said this patient has seronegative spondyloarthropathy, meaning rheumatoid factor should be negative and finally they all share axial skeleton involvement means spinal column involvement or inflammatory back pain what we mean by inflammatory back pain the back pain can be divided into two types mechanical and inflammatory in mechanical the pain aggravated by exercise or occur with heavy work and it's relieved with rest and usually has a precipitating factor such as lifting heavy object while an inflammatory back pain is the contrary it is low back pain of insidious onset radiating down the buttock or posterior thigh it is exacerbated by rest yes it is exacerbated by rest and relief with exercise so it is opposite to mechanical back pain and is usually associated with early morning stiffness lasting more than one hours so to some features that come to all type of spondyloarthropathy are number one asymmetrical inflammatory oligoarthritis number two history of inflammatory back pain Number three, enthesitis or dactylitis. Number four, all have some familial cause with association genetic human leukocyte antigen B27 association. Eye involvement are common in all the disorder, mostly uveitis, and all could be presented with involvement of aortic valve leading to aortic valve incompetence or conduction defect. There are four disorders belong to group of spondyloarthropathy. One, ankylosing spondylitis. Two, psoriatic arthritis. Three, reactive arthritis, or previously called Reiter syndrome. And four, inflammatory bowel disease associated arthritis. So, today we discuss ankylosing spondylitis. Ankylosing spondylitis 
characteristically affecting the axial joint, mean the spine. It is more common in men and men to women ratio 3 to 1, some sources say 5 to 1, whatever, it is more common in men. Peak age of onset is second to third decade of life and there is high association with human leukocyte antigen B27. Almost 95% of ankylosing spondylitis have human leukocyte antigen B27 positive. So this has high positive predictive value, but negative human leukocyte antigen does not exclude ankylosing spondylitis. So when we suspect ankylosing spondylitis, usually inflammatory back pain in young age male. Inflammatory back pain in young age male is highly likely it is ankylosing spondylitis. How patient with ankylosing spondylitis presented to medical attention. Patient complaining of inflammatory low back pain and we said inflammatory mean it's insidious onset, aggravate by rest and relieve with exercise. Okay. An inflammatory low back pain of insidious onset is the hallmark of ankylosing spondylitis, manifesting as pain and stiffness that is worse after immobility and is better with use. Symptoms are prominent in the morning and lasting more than one hour. And night pain severe enough to awake the patient from sleep is common. Early in the course, ankylosing spondylitis almost always affect the lumbar spine. And as the disease progress, it will ascend up to involve the thoracic and cervical spine. This is in contrary to rheumatoid arthritis, in which we say thoracic spine almost never involved by rheumatoid arthritis. Ankylosing refers to bony bridging of the vertebra reserved from chronic inflammation, the calcified ligament and disc capsule in such case are read in radio as syndesmo fight and we see it later on on x-ray. All these change will lead to reduced lateral flexion, the patient unable to laterally bend and reduce forward flexion which could be used as a test to monitor the progression of disease we call it Schubert test what is Schubert test this is the back of a normal patient we mark L5 spine now we draw two lines one line 5 cm below it and the other line 10 cm above it and ask the patient to lean forward as much as possible. Then we measure the distance between the two lines again. Normally there should be more than 5 cm expansion. So there will should be more than 20. If after this maneuver we measure the expansion less than 20 cm total this has restrictive bending and the patient likely has ankylosing spondylitis also when thoracic spine is involved there will be kyphosis lastly there will be reduced chest expansion the typical stooped posture of an ankylosing spondylitis with advanced disease and is caused by a combination of flexion deformity of the neck, thoracic kyphosis, loss of lumbar lordosis and flexion deformities of the hip. What are the borobrognostic feature in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. These can summarize as being male is a risk factor for poor disease, early age of onset, using of tobacco or smoking, the presence of hip or peripheral arthritis is bad prognosis, or superadded psoriasis, inflammatory bowel disease or eye involvement, so extra 
axial manifestation is border prognosis, elevated ESR and sleep, reactive routine, also indicate active disease and poor prognosis. These are the features of axial involvement, but ankylosing spondylitis could cause extra axial involvement and these can lead to patient may complain of fatigue, anemia, eye involvement most commonly anterior uveitis, prostatitis in men, inflammatory bowel disease, osteoporosis due to immobility and poor exposure to thumb, cardiovascular disease, most aortic valve insufficiency and conductive defect. As the disease is chronic inflammation, it could lead to secondary amyloidosis and patient may have pulmonary fibrosis with characteristic involvement of the upper loop of the lung. How we could investigate patient with ankylosing spondylitis? First, majority will have an increased inflammatory marker during active disease, but normal result does not exclude the disease. Anemia of a chronic inflammation is common and all of them rheumatoid factor, anti stronated peptide antibody and anti-nuclear antibody should be negative. Now the main line of investigation is imaging. We will start with simple plain x-ray. In ankylosing spondylitis, x-ray of sacroiliac joint will show loss of cortical margin, widening of joint space and subsequently sclerosis and narrowing with effusion. This is IB view of the pelvis in patients with ankylosing spondylitis. So these, this bone is the iliac bone. This bone is the sacrum. In between there is sacroiliac joint. We see this, of course, this joint is normal. This is the abnormal. So we will talk about the normal, then we go to the abnormal. In the normal joint, we see there is a clear defined margin of both bone. The joint is narrow and the bone density is equal. While in the right side sacroiliac joint, the bone margin is ill-defined. Not like this. This is one. The joint space is widening and there is sclerosis or subchondral sclerosis of the bone. These are characteristic of sacroiliitis, which is common axial involvement in patient with ankylosing spondylitis. Now, if we look to lateral x-ray or lateral lumbosacral spine, we will see there is the querying of the anterior border of the vertebra. This is number one. Number two, there is sclerosis of vertebral margin, which means subchondral erosions and destruction. Sclerosis more dense than the normal vertebral body. And finally, there is ossifications of the ligaments that connect the two vertebra and bony growth this bony growth causes some dysmorphites these are all finding in patients with ankylosing spondylitis if we look at the ab view of the vertebra These are sclerosis in between the vertebra, vertebral margin, or sifications of the ligament, as if the vertebra connected with each other as a single structure, similar to bamboo stem. So this X-ray characteristically show bamboo spine or bamboo sign. This is just x-ray showing upper loop fibrosis 
and patient with ankylosing spondylitis. How we manage patient with ankylosing spondylitis? We should know the aim of management is to relieve the pain and the stiffness, maintain maximum range of skeletal mobi mobi mobility, and avoid the development of deformity. So exercise is particularly important in ankylosing spondylitis and can help reduce more mo mobility and to prevent key forces. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs are considered first-line therapy for ankylosing spondylitis, and some studies suggest that daily use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs may reduce the progression of disease. So, in ankylosing spondylitis, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is considered disease-modifying agent, not supportive care. Failure of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs we need to go to the next line of treatment, more aggressive treatment, which is human process factor, like enifleximab, adalimumab, or etanercept. They are indicated in patients who have inadequate response to non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. If there is any rule for non-biological disease-modifying agent that we previously used in rheumatoid arthritis, they are not helpful in the treating axial disease, meaning inflammatory back pain and spinal involvement, but may be helpful if the patient has superadded peripheral arthritis. Oral steroid may be required only if there is eye involvement, but otherwise have no role in the management of ankylosing spondylitis. Thank you very much.